Welcome to this special BGP demonstration where I'm joined by Maris. He says he just wandered in here randomly and he claims to be just a regular Microtic employee. But this is very suspicious because routing wizards tend to be attracted by powerful high-end routers such as the ones lying on this table. Let's see, perhaps Maris can help us with our setup. These are four of our CCR2216 routers. They come with the most powerful CPU that we offer in our products. And besides the 25 gigabit ports, they also have two 100 gigabit ports each. This one will act as our ISP. And then the next two are independently connected to it. So we have two connections to the internet. And then they are connected to a third router that could now potentially benefit from two uplinks. The fourth router, we'll, we will just use that one to run some traffic as if we had local endpoints. The question is, can we use BGP here? Yes, but in most cases, end-user setups like uh, this one does not require BGP. You can simply set up uh, load balancing uh, shown in previous videos. Uh, however, there are some cases where BGP can be beneficial, but it depends on several aspects. Like, uh, are both uplinks from same ISP? Do you have your own ASN and assigned network? And also, what kind of services your ISP is providing? Okay, in this setup we will have a single ISP. Uh, could you please elaborate on what is ASN and assigned network how that works. So basically, internet is a giant network consisting of many large and small networks. Large networks or networks united in a groups uh, with unified routing policies are called autonomous systems. And to those autonomous systems, we have assigned a unique autonomous system number, which is unique to each AS and is used for external communication to other ASs. Uh, this number is also used to record the pass to the destination and advertised in BGP AS pass attribute and is used for uh, basic loop detection. There is also option to use private ISNs when ISP is providing specific services utilizing multiple links. Uh, in this case, public IP network is assigned from ISP's own range and uh, the network is always routed through ISP's network. Uh, this kind of setup can be utilized to provide services like intrusion detection, DOS mitigations to protect the servers and so on, but uh, that is outside the scope of this video. All right, so as a home user, I wouldn't be missing out on this? As a home user, most likely you will not be able to get ASN, uh, but if you already have ASN and network allocated, then BGP and connection to multiple ISPs are absolutely necessary. Uh, you can even become a small service provider yourself or even uh, become a transit provider. And if I wanted to do that, how could I get my own ASN and an allocated network? Uh, regional internet registries are responsible for uh, ASN and network allocations. In Europe, it is uh, RIPA NCC, RIN for America and so on for other countries. Typically, end users do not allocate directly from uh, regional internet registries. There is specific hierarchy. First, there is a regional internet registry, then there is local internet registry or national internet registry, which is also the ISP, and then only the end user. So the end user uh, typically gets the allocations from national or local registries. And if you are if you are the client of the large ISP, most likely that will be the one that is allocating also the ASN and the network. Uh, what about the uh, availability of ASNs and uh, networks? Can anyone get one? Uh, not really. Uh, ASNs are assigned to organizations that are of certain size, must meet certain criteria. 
before local governing authorities decides to give you the ASN. When you have ASN, you can get networks. As for networks, most, mostly internet registries say that IPv4 address range is exhausted and you can get only IPv6, but that is not entirely true for, for the end user. And by the end user, I mean the organizations, ISPs and so on. So there is still a chance that you might get the IPv4 range from your local registry. All right, uh, let's try some configuration. Uh, presume I was able to get ASN and a network. I want my uh, local services to have public IPs. Can we do something like uh, load balancing? Uh, sure, actually BGP con configuration itself is nothing complicated. Hardest uh, thing will be to understand the concept and apply uh, routing policies. So let's first do the basics and set up BGP instance. Even though version 7 does not have specific instance configuration like other vendors or router S version 6, we can use the template configuration uh, for specific instance. Router S version 7 is using router ID to determine automatically to which instance session will belong. Template concept was introduced to better manage dynamic peers. There are quite a lot of users setting multiple instances either by mistake or intentionally and wonders why BGP do not work as intended. I'll demonstrate it later. So next in the list is to set up BGP network. For that we will use address lists. As you can see, we have added the black hole route and it is necessary for synchronization and protection against loops for free. Um, that is interesting. How does the black hole route accomplish that? So basically, when, when traffic is routed to your gateway from the internet and you don't have any IPs assigned from that subnet, black hole route will simply drop those packets. And so, and so here's the protection for free. So next up, we can add the filters. So if we do not set this filter, we, we become a transit provider. For example, there was one case when uh, whole internet was routed over one end user setup because of bad policies set by him and by his uh, ISPs. Wow, I didn't, I didn't know that's even possible. <laughs> Basically, in modern days, it's not, uh, not possible anymore because ISPs uh, are now setting up uh, routing policies very carefully. No, right. good, good to hear that. So now we are ready to set up a BGP session. And now if we go to sessions menu, we can see established session with our ISP. And if we go to advertisements menu, we can see that we are advertising our network. Uh, so is that the connection to ISP1 working? Yes, and now we are ready to set up connection to ISP2. So at this point we have both uh, connections to ISPs and uh, uh, both our edge routers are advertising our networks. So from here we want to set up OSPF between all three local routers 
uh, to distribute the fault road from both ed edge rotors. All right, is the OSPF the common way to do this? Uh, no, you can use any IGP protocol, even static routing. Uh, static routing can be done on very small networks, but anything larger will be a nightmare to manage without any kind of IGP. So now at this point we, we have ECMP route uh, balancing upload traffic via both links. And uh, download comes into one of the routers which is closer to the destination and this black hole. Uh, we're just getting started. Come back for part two where we complete this. <laughs>